Hi, welcome back. So we're picking back up. So I went ahead and factored that polynomial. And then here's my sign chart with my values. I tested some, I tested zero, three, and five, and I got negative, 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 positive, positive, positive. So that tells me that um, if I was doing a solution set for this, if I was looking for it, it would be two to four. But what if I just want to know their end behavior? Well, if I put a graph up, I can kind of see what that's going to look like, right? So from two to four, so let me write this out so I can actually see what this looks like. Positive, ah, negative, and positive. So from two to four, right here, from two to four, I have negative values. So that means I'm doing something like this if Miss Jag could actually connect her dots. There we go. I'm doing something like that. And then we've got positive stuff happening on this side. And doesn't that look like my quadratic equation? Heck yeah. So I can end up writing correct limit notation based off of this. So my limit as, let's just call this g of x. Sure. My limit as x approaches negative infinity, because that's this side, right, equals positive infinity. And then on this side, my limit as x approaches positive infinity of g of x is equal to positive infinity as well. So again, just connecting back to that end behavior, it is possible to solve it using this sign chart method. Uh, just to wrap up, there are a couple of different kinds of unusual solutions for it. So I'm going to mention, I think, four of them. Um, is it possible to get no solution as an answer? Absolutely. There are a few different funky ones, but the most common one I would say is, do all graphs have to hit the x-axis? They really, really don't. In fact, even our traditional quadratic equation doesn't have to hit the x-axis. Yeah, the parent function does, but what happens if I vertically shift it up? It no longer hits that parent function. Okay, so I've got this very first one where we've got x squared plus 5x plus 8 is less than 0. So we're already on one side, and then the next thing you would try to do is factor it. But think about it. Can you factor that? Eight, eight's factors are 1, 2, 4, 8. Any combination of 1 and 8, any combination of 2 and 4, they're not going to get me 5. So this is a non-factorable polynomial. I could test that again with synthetic division. Possible rational zeros of 8 would be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8. I could synthetically divide all 8 of those possible rational zeros, and I would always return a non-zero remainder, which means they aren't real factors. But to give you a visual, I put that graph up. As you can see, just like I talked about, we have a traditional quadratic and what's happened. It has been shifted up, which means that there's there, it's not going to hit that zero. It's never going to hit that zero. And it also means that my function will always be positive. So if I ask myself, when would my polynomial be less than zero? When would my polynomial be negative? It'll never be negative. So that means the answer to this question is no solution. There's no solution to this question. But what happens when I flip that? What happens when I say the same polynomial, but now I want to know where it's greater than or equal to zero? Again, look back at that graph. Where is it greater than or equal to zero? Everywhere all domain, it's greater than or equal to zero. So the answer to this would actually be all reals. So we could say from negative infinity to positive infinity. Our third example here is x squared minus 10x plus 25 is greater than zero. This is factorable. In fact, I could write out that factor for you because factors of 25 that get me to five would simply be x minus five times x minus five. That's a multiplicity, right? Yeah. Come on, work. That's a multiplicity. That tells me that's actually x minus 5 squared. I have two of them. So how many rational zeros did I just solve for? One. Up until this point, you have had, that is a terrible line, you have had at least two values. So what would that sign chart look like? I would have one value. That's it. That means whatever I test here, whatever I test here, I'm only going to hit that x-axis one time. And in fact, when I test it, I end up being positive on both sides. So what does that look like? What does that mean? Well, I'll show you on the graph. It means I literally just hit the x-axis right at that 5. That's it. I just do that. Now, what if this was the cubic function? I might have been able to see that 
I was coming from positive, hit it and went negative. That's also a real possibility. But how would I write this solution answer? Where is my polynomial greater than zero? And if you said all reals, you would actually be mistaken because what's happening at five? At five, my answer is actually zero. And since this simply says greater than zero, it simply says positive values, zero is not a positive value. Zero is neither positive nor negative. It is itself. And this doesn't say equals to. So your answer has to actually be written as negative infinity to five joined with five to positive infinity, because technically this means I approached five. Technically this means I approached five. It doesn't mean I included five. So that would have been your truest solution answer. And our final example, I simply switched that value. And again, here's that graph. What did I tell you happened at five? It equaled zero. There is no negative value, but it certainly does equal zero. So your answer for this is literally just five and all inclusive. That's it for our unusual sets. And in fact, that's it for polynomial inequalities. And that's it for our unit. Wow, we've made it so far. Okay, so I will see y'all next time for unit three.